Hey guys, it's Justine. And I'm Jenna. Welcome to Same Brain episode 27. 27. And we've got a special guest. Let's roll that intro. So we are actually in Arizona right now and we are joined with Justin Roberts. Hello everybody. How's Hello. It, how's it Hi. going? It's great. Welcome to Arizona. I'm very embarrassed for the weather that you guys are experiencing this week. It's usually really nice here. And it's uh, it's not been nice for you guys, and I apologize. There was snow. There was is, snow. Is that yeah. something that happens here often, or is that a every few years? Like one day we get like a little snow in the air, but it's very rare. And, and we, you were here for it. We were definitely here for we it. We were here for like four of the rainy days. Like a lot, a lot of rain. A lot of rain. Hundred yeah. percent rain. The one day said forty percent, but it rained all day long. Then it doesn't was, happen often. It I'm really does. I'm so glad we could be a part of the history. I'm really glad we. Could be. I'm very embarrassed. It's I okay. Apologize. It's not your fault. At all. It, it could out. be. It could be. We don't know. I talk Arizona up to everybody. Oh, you got to come out to Arizona. The sun's always out. Sun and clear <sighs> blue sky every day. And then you guys come and it's raining every day, except tomorrow's supposed to be nice. There were storms, lightning, thunder. It felt like we were back on the Never East Coast. Happens. It is true. You have been talking it up for quite a while. Yeah. It's, even monsoon yeah. season this year. I think we had one monsoon and it wasn't even like a real monsoon. Well, my one friend said, oh, well, if it's raining, be careful of flooding because apparently flooding happens when flooding it rains like happens. a little bit. We don't have sewers. We're not used to rain. That's that's how often it rains that we don't even have sewers. Where does it go? I was having this conversation with my friend today who's a chemical engineer because she was asking about that. And I said, well, it just disappears, right? Like the sun just comes out and uh, the, the water just dries up. And then she explained to me like something with the pavement. And I was I doing follow. some research because you recommended to go to the Scottsdale Greenbelt and they are working on a renovation project just for, for <laughs> is this is that like a sore subject here? So was it red- closed? Were you not no, able no, to no, go? No, 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 okay. no, no. They're talking about how they can, you know, reduce flooding. Oh. It's great. You should check it out. It's on their website. Wow. Yeah. yeah if I start running, maybe I'll What's I'll look the green it. belt? It's like just this, there's like an 11 mile kind of loop. There's like golf courses, there's parks. Oh. It's very nice. That's I recommended it, but I had never run it. I oh. got it from a friend. Who it was the runs. 11 mile loop that oh, I was going to She was like, I'm going to wake up 6 a.m. I'm going to run 11 miles. And I looked at the weather and I'm like, <laughs> I was like, it's going to rain. You're like, no. My app says it's not going to rain. I said, okay, well, my app says it's going to rain. You and then up. the next day you're like, oh, it's raining. But the best part is she's like, have you ever run 11 miles before? And I'm like, no. And I was like, well, then why do you think you're going to do it now? There was the one time when you went for a run and you hurt your ankle and I had to come pick you up. <laughs> anyway, she didn't go. Justin, thank you for joining us. I didn't run the 11 miles. I probably won't, but we'll see. Can you just give like a quick introduction to yourself? Why you're here? You know, the meaning of life. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I was born in 1979, December 29th to be exact. Born to my parents. My sister's three years older than me. And then fast forward a little bit. I was the ring announcer a long time for WWE Wrestling. And then was out of wrestling and wrote a book about what it was like to be the ring announcer and follow my dreams and all of that. And then I tried a bunch of different things. And that's actually where we met during that phase of trying different things. Hold on. Can we get like... A ring announcement, but for the same brain <laughs> podcast. I don't know. This do is this is revolutionary. I mean, that's too much pressure. No, ladies and gentlemen, this is the same <laughs> brain podcast. Woo! You love to hear you it. You love to hear it. It's only going to happen here on the same brain podcast. <laughs> oh, that's exciting! That was a great idea, Jenna. Thank you. Why so I'm part, you know, that's why I'm here. We have same brain, but sometimes mine functions at a very low capacity, so Jenna has to fill in the blanks. I appreciate it. (laughs) You guys make a great team. We try. I enjoy your work. Oh boy. How long were you with WWE? 12 years. Got there straight out of college. That was the dream job. Did it. Was over it. Ready to move on. Always loved wrestling. Never lost my love for wrestling. Um, But I was done with wrestling and went out to see what else was out there and then tried a bunch of different things and then came back into wrestling and now I'm back in wrestling for All Elite Wrestling, AEW, Wednesday nights on TNT. Ooh, can we get another round of applause? Yes, round of Oh, I hit the I didn't even hit the button. There we go. Uh, so just for anybody watching or listening, I, I know very little about wrestling. So basically all I know is from what I see you post. And that's really, that's the extent of it. And, and I read know my less. book. So you there learned you a little bit about wrestling through there. I did read your book, which was actually really good. And it was kind of cool because you really kind of, you went, you definitely went in on everything as far as, you know, behind the scenes of WWE. So if anybody wants to check that out, they definitely should. It's, it's a good read. Your book is very interesting. It was. Thank you. Because I knew of your career from the beginning from MySpace. 
Okay, so this is the story of how we actually randomly met. I'm a huge Toll fan. And then how did you actually end up hosting the VIP Toll events? I wasn't a huge Tool fan. And I just became friends with Adam Jones, the guitarist from Tool. And he was a big wrestling fan. So when he came to the shows, usually in Los Angeles, we would just talk about everything else. We weren't talking about music. We weren't talking about wrestling, mostly Chicago stuff. And we just became friends through wrestling. And then he approached me one day at the Staples Center. He came up to me and he was with Justin Chancellor, who at the time I didn't know. He's like, hey, we're uh, gonna be doing some shows. And if you'd wanna introduce us, like if you don't want to, it's, it's cool. But if you wanna introduce us at a show, and I knew of Tool from like, from junior high. I just remember the t-shirts. And uh, I'm like, oh yeah, that, that, that'd be cool, sure. Uh, and didn't really put much thought into it. And then the stars aligned where I was going to be home one day and they're going to be coming to Phoenix. So I went and introduced them at the arena. I started listening to their music just to see what I was getting into. And I became a huge Tool fan. This music is awesome. It's really different. I love this. So I introduced them for a show. And then that was that. Then um, October, I think, of 2015, I wasn't with WWE anymore. And I wasn't on tour 52 weeks a year. And Adam called up and he said, hey, we're going to be doing this thing in Tempe. And I think you would be a great host for this. And I met all the guys and the guys were really nice and really normal. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll host this thing. And I got there that day and I asked Adam what he wanted to do. And he's like, well, we're going to bring the crowd in. Then we're going to do this and maybe do this. So everything I did, I turned into wrestling. And yeah. I said, hey what if we tell the crowd we're going to do this, but then we do this and then we tell them this, but then this happens and then this happens. And I basically made it like a wrestling show, mm -hmm. took him on a roller coaster and he loved it. And so we did it with the fans and the live audience enjoyed that night. We took them on a roller coaster. The diehard tool fans came. I don't know. It was 40 some thousand people that came to the show and maybe... I don't know, 500 or 1,000 people that came to this, maybe 500. It, was, it felt like, well, because we met in Pittsburgh at their VIP thing. I think there's only a couple hundred. Like it felt very, very it was very, very small. Yeah, so they tried to limit these. So this was a smaller audience. Everybody had fun. So that night, Adam came to me, goes, uh, that was awesome. He like, you have to come on tour with us. Okay. And so that was it. I, I just totally fell into it. We had fun. Wrestling fans are very passionate. And I loved the rapport that I had with wrestling fans all these years. So now I'm hosting these intimate tool tours with the hardcore tool fans in every city. And it's almost like I feel like I don't belong because I didn't really know that much about tool at the time. I was learning as I went from the fans. And so I became a fan as time went on and watching the concert each night. And But I feel like that's the perfect person that you want to hire for a job. <laughs> Like, I would never want to hire someone who was, like, obsessed with, like, you know, right. like, my sister or, like, yourself because you're like, oh, you're too close to it. Right. So it's like, you know, like, you're hired for, like, you're professional. This is a, you're good at your job. Like, you're not, like, a crazy diehard fan where you're, like, you might be a little bit, you know, they might be skeptical of you. So you're, like, the per perfect person to hire, I feel like. You're like, they're not hiring me for that yeah, job. But, no, yeah, they're not going <laughs> to hire like, her. No, no, no. Be like, that's why even Apple for a while, they're like, we can't talk to the psycho. Bringing that back around to Apple, that was the first time that I had ever got invited to an Apple event. But I had been planning on going to this Pittsburgh tool show for like the day that they announced it, I bought those VIP tickets. Like I was like, I'm I'm going, I'm flying home, going to the show. And I made my friend Des, I mean, she's she's also a part of like the, okay, Justine's doing something crazy again. I'm, I'm gonna be along for this ride. So we went to the show. And then the first thing that you said to me when I was checking in, you're like, do I know you from my space? <laughs> you had followed me on social media, <laughs> I think the night before. Yeah. Either yeah, the night yeah. before or two nights before. So it was fresh in my mind when I saw I Justine, I was like, whoa, I, I haven't seen I Justine for I don't know how many <laughs> years. So you were fresh in my head. So when you were checking in, I saw you like your registration, like as you were signing in, like Justine, wait a minute, that must be I Justine. And I asked you, and then we just yeah. started talking and you were very nice. And I had a book signing that day and you had like tweeted something for me. You're just, you're really cool. So yeah, that's right. Because I was like, okay, who's this Justin person that's doing the VIP thing? Like, you know, I'm doing my like super creepy stalking behind yeah. the scenes. I'm like, okay, I, I gotta look everything up for the show. I gotta be prepared. So, so you didn't add on MySpace. This is not a MySpace story. Well, no, but I think, well, I mean, okay. I was like, wait, have you, but he remembered me from MySpace, like back in the day. You were I very to, active on MySpace. Oh yeah. I don't want to talk about I was it. Say, I think there's some, there's some the stories. The cool thing was, it was like you were being how you are now back then before that was a thing. 
And that's why I thought your book was so fascinating because it tells that story of you just always being you and mm -hmm. wanting to do this before it was a thing to be. Well, and that's also kind of a cool crossover to like your book as well, because obviously for you, I mean, you were such a huge wrestling fan. Like he has, I don't know if you've seen some of his photos and stuff that he posts on social, but like you've got so many throwback photos for like any situation. So clearly it's something that you were also passionate about. Obsessed with it, yeah. So how did you actually kind of get into like that, that first kind of meeting to be like, okay, you're in the WWE now. So I had started when I was 16 in high school, just announcing small independent wrestling shows. And as time went on, I was working more shows, moved out to Arizona for school. I went to U of A and then started hooking up with, uh, there's a promoter basically in Phoenix that would get a lot of work in this area or Colorado or New Mexico, like this region. And as time went on, I just had more shows and more experience and just kept getting videotapes and building my resume and just driving WWE insane. <laughs> and then graduated college, sent them an email like, hey, just so you know, I graduated college. I have <laughs> nothing to do. I'm available. I have a degree. I'll drive anywhere to work. And they finally called the next day and said, hey, we're going to give you a shot. And they gave me a shot. My first match was announcing a guy named John Cena. I you know, know him. Oh, you know John? No, I mean like I know. No, <laughs> like, no. You know John. John. Oh my God, I actually used to love John Cena. Wait. I mean, I'm not saying I don't now. We sat next to him, I think at Dancing with the Stars we thing too. We've seen him at like a bunch of events. I mean, he would have absolutely no idea. Do he you, was always my favorite. You remember the backpack that I bought at Walmart? Yeah. It was a John Cena backpack. I do. You had a John Cena backpack? I had a John Cena backpack. Yep, I did. Bought it in Hawaii. Kind of, it's very true. Great. <laughs> I don't remember why though. Have that with you here? I don't. Oh. This was in like 2010. 10. Oh, okay. It was a long time ago, yeah. I don't think I still have it's it. A okay. Lot of suitcases. I didn't know if maybe you had the John Cena. That would be. Had. I would be concerned if <laughs> eleven years later she still had it here. I'd be like, oh. So John yeah. Cena, your first match, and like yeah, how did that go? It was basically go? before he was on TV. He was getting. It's called a dark match. So it was John Cena and uh, announced that match. Next night announced him again, and then Rey Mysterio, who's also an awesome wrestler. It was his. <laughs> You know Rey Mysterio? I have a Rey Mysterio. So you guys don't know wrestling, <laughs> but I dropped two I'm names. I'm falling off the couch. <laughs> two names, and you have stories on both of them. So I wanted to bring up my Rey story, but I was like, I don't even know her. Like, I don't even know who this is, but I have a story. Your sister brought it up to me a while back, so I'm ready it's for this. so funny. Hold on. Okay, keep telling your story. I need to find the picture. No. She's oh, gonna find the picture. Oh, you're gonna find the picture. I gotta okay. find a picture. So the first match on the second night was John Cena against Shelton Benjamin. The next night was Rey Mysterio against Funaki. Those were my tryouts. Ended up getting the job and just getting used here and there. And for 12 years, announced all over the world and uh, for all the shows, all the pay-per-views, all the big matches. Got to work with everybody I grew up watching. It was awesome. So since we're not, well, we, we're saying we're not wrestling Gosh. people, but we clearly know. And, and like The Rock too, huge fan of, of Dwayne. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's The Rock. It Come is. on Rock's now. Don't ask me any other people outside of the three people we just discussed yeah. because you're not gonna, I'm not gonna I don't know. know. We're three for three. We've dropped three names. True. And you True. know all three of them. For wrestling fans that are watching now, do you have any like fun stories that like they may be like super into? I have a book full. Justin Roberts, <laughs> best seat in the house. Your backstage pass through my WWE yeah. journey. Lots of stories. There Good is and a lot. bad. <laughs> it was cool because it's like, especially coming from that background of not knowing anything, I was like, I felt like I learned so much about wrestling and just I the I tried world. to explain it so if you weren't a wrestling fan, you would still be able to understand it. Um, but then I like talking about AEW now because that's been like a totally different experience. It went from, oh my gosh, I'm a fan. I'm really excited to be living out my dream to I was like done with wrestling. Yeah. I was like sitting on the curb like, hey, I'm not in wrestling anymore, and now I'm back in wrestling, so it's really exciting. And working with a lot of people who are just getting into wrestling on national television for the first time and being able to give advice and say, hey, take this all in, take in this moment, and just, I learned so much from my adventure that I want to make it the best for everybody that I work with. And our coworkers are awesome. Our boss is awesome. Tony Khan, who... His father uh, owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. So he started this wrestling company because he's a huge wrestling fan. So he's an awesome boss. He's a wrestling super fan who now has his very own wrestling company. And he's just a great guy and has this awesome company that we just, we get to go out there and do wrestling. So we all love it. We're having, it's like. That's so cool though. It's too good to be true. It yeah. really is. It's just, we're all having fun and having the best time doing this. I'm still trying to find the picture. Oh, okay. But it's a very random. I was in Mexico City. I like 
said yes to this project, we ended up on some like little boat. It was like a three hour journey where we went to this island of like the, these like dolls and it was just, there were spiders and it was one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Didn't you get hit with sticks? Yeah, I got hit with sticks. I think they were trying to like beat the evil out of me in case like something entered my soul. Wait, anyway, who was beating you with sticks? And wait, and then I don't even, so Ray was there So then? Ray was wasn't Ray on the boat you with, with me. With stick? But at one, no, that would be incredible. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, Maybe because great. of Singapore Kane. I wish I had all of my, uh, my why I didn't was have he my, there? So I don't was know. It a steel chair? So we had like a bunch of influencers and like stuff. And then we went to, I think we were going to a, a preview of like a movie or something. And then I look over and everyone was like obsessing over like, like oh my God, that's Ray. And I was like, who? That's Ray. I was like, you're gonna have to give me more. And like, that's Ray Mysterio. I'm like, okay. I remember our friend Ed is like obsessed with wrestling. I have a feeling like if I send him a, self, a selfie of me and Ray, like <laughs> he's gonna lose his mind. I got a picture with, with like Ray and this is just like my my long standing joke of like, yeah, I met him in Mexico. Like no big deal. Like we, and then I went and got beat with sticks. Like that, it's this just, whole story it sounds so, so weird. It's so weird. I don't even know how to explain it. But then there was also, we were taking this like little boat home. It was like 3 a.m. And another boat rolled up and like, just gave us like tequila and quesadillas. Meanwhile, I didn't know any of these people. I'm so glad you're here to tell the story. And I'm like, wait, you're going to drink that tequila? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, what a quesadilla is that? I'm like, cheese. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> is there any chance that it wasn't even really Ray Mysterio? It was just some dude in a mask. I know it was. Keep looking. I'm finding find the it. picture. I feel like it's probably something I would have posted on my Instagram. Didn't you send me this? Because you think had texted me I while it was happening. I think so. I, don't I think mean, you sent me the picture. Like just, I'm uncomfortable. It was about this and whole then trip. The stick they hit me in the eye, and I'm like, oh my god, like, what am I to, like? Did you scratch my cornea? I'm like, what's happening right now? Wait, they went after your eye? No, I they thought didn't it was just to, to get the evil out of you. Well, they like hit me in the head, but the one of the things like wrapped around and got me in the eye, and I'm like, I can't even say anything right now because this is, there's a, also a video of me getting hit with the I'm stick. glad you're talking about this. I have a full vlog. I wonder if Ray is in my vlog. We should probably watch that after we and really just shouldn't. discuss it. Do you have like PTSD from this? Clearly. I, the, she does not seem well. No, uh, it was such a strange- This is the like, first time she's bringing it up to you, right? No, I mean, oh, I, have, no. I haven't heard it in a while. I mean, I'm pretty sure I was probably texting you updates because first off I was alone in like Mexico, which is fine. It was lovely. Actually, I think they had a very big earthquake after. Oh, gosh. I would much rather be in Mexico right now than Arizona because of the rain. It's really nice in Mexico. It's usually nice and yeah. warm, no rain. Although- It was lovely. I think they're having some COVID troubles as well. Well, you would say so. Because that's yeah, where I everyone heard, from LA is going to escape. And like, True. Go there, but yeah, it was lovely. I had a great time. Great time. Great Despite quesadilla from a boat. Getting hit I got to meet. Poked in the eyes. I got to meet Ray. Got to meet Ray. He was lovely. Do you know what he's up to now? Do you know what he's up to? He went back to wrestling. Oh, no yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I ran now, into him at the Dallas airport. We had a layover and oh my gosh, bumped into each other. It was great. Did he have his mask on? He did not. He had sunglasses on though. I see. I, yeah. see, I see. So now with the new wrestling kind of oh, like, so, elite wrestling so how does Wednesdays so, at 8 7 central <laughs> on TNT so I know I was talking to you about this before so is there like a mix of new talent and then old talent so like how does that all work yeah it's a mixture of we have like Chris Jericho who's been at it for a long time I know that name. he is a legend Chris Jericho is one of our top stars. Uh, in addition, we have Dustin Rhodes, Cody Rhodes. We have Jim Ross on commentary, Tony Schiavone on commentary, like legends in wrestling. Uh, we have so many guys who've been around the business for a long time and are amazing, and even behind the scenes, like Dean Malenko and Arn Anderson. Um, I'm dropping these names mostly for you guys watching at home because yeah. they probably... It's okay. Don't know these guys. Well, that's like good. Hey, you never know. We might, maybe I right, got a selfie true. in Mexico. You, you, you really don't know. And then we also have a lot of, I don't want to say new talent because they're not new. They've been at it for a long time, but guys who hadn't really been working on a national level, even though maybe they have, I don't, I don't want to not give them enough credit, but you have like Kenny Omega, you have the Young Bucks, you have so many wrestlers who are so amazing, who didn't maybe work at WWE, but they've been at it for a long time. They've worked in New Japan. They've worked in Ring of Honor. They've worked, again, I, that's for you guys. If you guys recognize these places, I apologize. If no, this no, is, no, this is great. So they've been at it for a long time. So this total all-star team of guys who've been around the business for a long time, guys and girls, of course, and then also a lot of newer talent who maybe the national audience isn't familiar with, but now they're learning about them in the year and a few months that we've been at it. And it's amazing. We have an all-star team. So a year and a few months. So you kind of started 
like kind of almost at the beginning of the whole COVID craziness. Basically, sort of. we started like last May. We did a pay per view. Then over time, we did like one event per month. Last October is when we started TV. So that was our first show in October of 2019. We started building up. We were doing really well. And then right around New Year's, um, we kind of started fresh. And we were just building and building and our shows were getting so good and because we're trying all these new things. We're a brand new company. For a lot of people, it was the first time doing this and the momentum was so good and was building. We did a sold out pay-per-view in Chicago at the end of February. It was February 29th because it was leap month, uh, leap year. This show, I felt like, because I grew up in Chicago going to these shows, I felt like it was back in the 90s sitting there, feeling the energy in the sold-out arena, like, this is amazing. We had a sold-out show coming to Rochester, New York. We had a sold-out show, which was going to be our biggest show yet, in Newark. Like, everything was just perfect. Our momentum was awesome. And then COVID hit. We were doing shows. We did Denver. The next week, we did Salt Lake City. And during the Salt Lake City show, that's when Tom Hanks announced that he was COVID positive. That's when... The Utah Jazz player announced that he was positive and the NBA like shut down. This was all in that night that we were doing our show. Wow. So those next two giant shows we had coming up just. I feel like whenever Tom Hanks announced it is when like the world was like, oh, I don't know. At least that was, that's what it felt like. Like, oh my God, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, yeah, that really was kind of like, okay, so if Tom Hanks can get COVID, like no one is safe. I think we were on a plane coming back to LA and we found out and we're like, we are never leaving the house ever again. Yeah. Cause we were in Hawaii right before everything shut down down with our parents who still had to travel back to Pennsylvania. We're like, you need to get home immediately because like, who knows? I was like, well, if we're stuck in Hawaii for nine months, like I'm not really going to complain. I'll miss the dog, ship him over somehow. But yeah, it was, it was was very scary. It's weird because you hear all these rumblings about everything that was going on in China, but I think as Americans, we're so used to seeing things around the world and just saying, oh, well, that's not going to affect us. Like, we're going to be okay. And and we weren't safe. And uh, it came here and we didn't know how extreme this was going to be, how long it was going to be. Personally, I was warned by some friends and I thought it would be like two months, maybe three tops. Here we are today and still going on and our friend, it's been awful. Our friend Ed actually was the one that gave us like this heads up because his dad like works a lot in the field and, and he was just like, you guys should probably, you know, get some things. Actually, I was left out of the text so you, thread. So we didn't realize that you were not in the text thread. So everybody else got so like this. a month later, we're like sending pictures of all of our like huge, like, like oh, our orders came in. Or maybe not months, but like a week later, we're like, look at all this stuff. Like we got, we're good. And we were like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, Where, what'd what? you guys get? And we're like, Oh, we, we were on the other text thread. Because I, I don't know if you were like it. busy or you were somewhere. We're like, oh, we're not going to like annoy you with this. And like he sent us like a list of all the things his dad was like, you need to get this, 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 like just in case. And we're like, okay. He did say that we needed to get duct tape, enough duct tape to, to like, tape off tape off all, all of the windows and yeah, the, to the outside. in case any air comes in. So hey, I man, have, air, airborne. I have you know? so much duct tape. It's better to be safe than sorry because you just didn't know how this was going to affect you. Um, AW kept running. They were, they were safe and running safely. I just heard that one of the underlying like, symptoms was asthma, and I've had asthma since I was born, and I didn't know how that was going to affect me, and if I ran a bigger risk of catching it, or if it would get me if I ended up getting it, so I pulled myself off the road. Our company was awesome. They said, if you're comfortable coming to work, come to work. If you're not, don't worry about it. You know, no pressure whatsoever. So I was like, okay, I'm scared to go out. I have no idea how this is going to affect me, and some people just... They wanted to go. They didn't care or they just felt like I'm going to be okay. So I stayed home. And then my mom was in a place where um, she was getting extra care. And I didn't know how safe she was going to be there because a lot of people come and go. So I pulled her out of there and moved her in with me. And so for three months, I took care of my mom and stayed in and just tried to stay safe, keep her safe, keep myself safe. And then when I saw everybody had been working and kind of got a better idea of how this affected people and you didn't have to tape up the windows and it maybe wasn't as bad, you didn't have to Lysol everything that came into the house. I said, okay, let me find a safer place for my mom, got her in a safer place. And then I went back to work after that. So I did sit out for three months, just not knowing and and then eventually went back to work. I mean, I think that's safe too, especially with the pre-existing conditions and stuff like that. It's like, you don't know how it's gonna right? affect you. And even some of our friends, who are very healthy and not people you would ever expect to have this long-term COVID. I mean, I'm hearing like horror stories and it's, it's scary. Yeah. And a lot of the like times it's happening, like they're like, I picked it up at work. 
like we don't know how long we've been safe, but it's still like you're around these people. It just, it happens. Like they've done everything correct. And then they were even like trying to quarantine in separate parts of their house. Like I tried to just like not see you, but it's like, how you live with someone? Like, what do you do? Yeah. Well, and even with though. us, like we all came in wearing masks today mm-hmm. and we basically just pulled them off right before we started this. And we had sanitized your microphone. We had the, microphone. Yeah. Microphone. We had we're the very doors far open. From each other. There was airflow, yeah. but then it's very cold to know. <laughs> Like, we okay. planned on shooting this outside, but we didn't get back until it was dark. So we, we were going we to. Come and normally you can shoot outside in yeah. Arizona because yeah. it's normally warm here, except this week. It's this there was week. there was hail. So you recently had Snoop on the show. Yeah, uh, which was pretty cool. We love Snoop. We do. Snoop is awesome. I, I got to work with him years ago, and then I went to some of his shows and got to hang out. Super good guy, and now he is a judge on. Go Big Show with Cody Rhodes, who's one of our wrestlers. Oh, cool. He's also a judge. So Snoop came to promote that and came out with Cody during the match. Cody usually comes out with Arn Anderson. Instead, he came out with Coach Snoop Dogg. So Snoop was his coach for the match. Ended up winning the match. I, I don't want to give full credit to Snoop because Cody's awesome, but it does help having Snoop in your corner. At the end of the segment, Snoop went up to the top rope and came down on uh, one of our guys. Snoop Dogg flew off the top rope. It was pretty impressive. I missed that. Yeah. Wow. How much prep kind of goes in before the shows? It kind of just comes together sometimes. Uh, we have an idea. Everybody has an idea of what's going on, mm-hmm. what the matches are going to be. Myself, like, I came from a world where I was very overproduced. And when you're a ring announcer, like, I'm a nerd, and I overanalyze everything mm-hmm. that I do as a ring announcer. And when you have writers and people who are just like, oh, you're going to say this, you're going to say this. Like, okay, that doesn't really make sense, whatever, yeah. but you do what you're told. In this world, I am not produced at all. So I'm able to show up and they say, this is what we're going to do tonight. And I just kind of write my own material and write up my own. I'm going to say this here. And I'm going to do this here and do this here and kind of work with the executive producer and just kind of make everything work. Mm-hmm. So it's really natural. It's, uh, it's a much more realistic feel than what I was used to. That's cool. Cause I'm always curious. Cause I know like just some shows that I'll do, I mean, you're so overproduced that I become not even myself anymore. Yeah. And then sometimes it's like, good luck. I'm like, well, wait, can I just get like a little in between? Yeah, like, well, what am I supposed to say? Just give me something. Yeah. So that's cool. At least like we you try can to get of- a general, like if there's something that I have, I'll, I'll make it work with the commentators, executive producer. And now for the first time in my career, I'm able to wear an IFB. Oh, that's so cool. I'm able to hear the commentators. I can hear the executive producer. So I could feel out, all right, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do this, or I have something planned out. and Okay, now I'm going to do this instead because this this just feels right. So I'm just doing what feels right. And luckily, back to my boss being awesome. Tony Khan just, he lets us go out there and be pros. And we yeah, know Tony. Well, let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, Hold on. please. There we go. Round of applause. Round of applause. Yes, yes. That. So we get to go out there and do what we know is the right thing to do. And I don't have to say, hey, is it okay if I do this, if I say this? I used to get chewed out if I said something or didn't do something at the, yeah. the right time. And now it's, okay, I'm just going to go out there and do what I know is the right thing to do. And that's how we all are. So yeah. it's, it's awesome. And it comes off on TV. We're all having fun and our audience has fun. And do you guys do two shows a week or how does it, what do you, you it's have to every, every Wednesday, Wednesday night. Okay. Every Wednesday night for two hours, eight, seven uh, on TNT. We're going to have a viewing party. Yeah, this is exciting. Oh my gosh, let's. It's oh fun. It's an entertaining show, whether you're into wrestling or not. It's a fun show to watch. And you you get, like, you're watching, you go, uh, that's Jake the Snake Roberts. What's he doing there? Or, uh, that guy just did, like, a triple flip because we have, like, crazy acrobatic guys and girls. And our talent's awesome. They're really, really great. So it's definitely different from, like, the UFC world where it's, like, Oh, like UFC, super aggressive. They're going out and they're trying to beat the hell out of each yeah. other to win a match. Our talent's going out there to entertain and put on a show all throughout from the beginning, middle and end. So they're not just going out there trying to destroy each other. They're going out there to entertain you. Yeah, which is good. As I, I mean, it's so hard to watch those those matches. Now having like actually started training, but not MMA, because that's a little bit too much for me. But it's like great to watch them because you can learn so many different techniques and see what works for different people. But I still, I cannot watch people just hit each other in the face. I mean, I can. I don't like it. It's just like, okay. I mean, I I definitely worry. I'm like, oh no, you could get hurt. But then I'm also like, yes, it's cool. But then I'm also like, oh, you could get hurt. I'm torn. Did this change after you went to Mexico and got hit with the (laughs) sticks and you got all into it? You're like, I like this stuff. (laughs) No, I think I've always been very aggressive and like, yeah, fighting, let's go. Did you guys (laughs) fight growing up? No, I don't think so. Cause really? there's like a five to, well, there's like a five to six year difference. Yeah. So I feel like if you would have tried to physically fight me when I was little, like I, w- I didn't really have a defense. No, I, I don't. We have a middle sister as well. So. Is I'm, there any fighting in between no, the three of you guys? 
I think we probably, probably. a little bit of bickering, maybe. I mean, I would no physicality. I don't. I don't That's know. Right. I mean, there's three girls, but we were all like into sports. Like we were all athletes. So I mean, I feel like we all were doing our own thing and just didn't I, really bother with I the other. Did I guess. hit Brian in the head with a golf club, but I think it was an accident. So I mean, that could be assault. That could... there's a lot coming out. <laughs> yeah, we're learning yeah. so much. Today. Well, you were there. We were. I never knew this side of you. <laughs> I mean, yes, got a lot of stories. <laughs> I'm just surprised she's not, you know, murdered dead me yet. Oh, murdered so, you? Yeah, me. Like right now. Well, you got to. They would she, know. They would, would know. I you put it out. a lot. I did I go to college it, for forensic biology, so I could probably get away with it. I feel like Justin gets these ideas like, we should do this, and just kind of like says, Jenna, come with me. Hey, I'm what like, are you doing? I'm like, yeah. mm, she knows I'm she not doing pulls anything. You into all these adventures, <laughs> and you go along with it, and sometimes it works out well, and sometimes it's like, what did you get me into? It's true, but I'm very, like, I mean, obviously, like, I would have not been into YouTube if it wasn't for her, so I'm very grateful that this is, like, my career. So, I mean, like I said, I went to college for forensic biology, so I'd probably be, like, sitting in a lab. Like, you'd be giving COVID tests now. I don't think I'd be giving them. I would be, like, doing, like, the PCR, like, little nerd stuff in the lab, so I'd probably be very busy. Probably. Speaking of COVID again, so you guys, as far as audiences go, because now like sports has completely just changed. Like that audience element, what has that been like for you guys so to in go pro from- wrestling? You're like taking your audience on a roller coaster. You're taking them, you're, you're getting them up and you're getting them to boo and to cheer. And you're doing everything to get those reactions from a crowd. And then you go to having no audience whatsoever. We were doing our shows just for the cameras. It became a, like a TV show. So it had to be really strange for them. For me, you know, it's easy to get in there and just, ladies and gentlemen, the following contest and just do my announcements. But for the wrestlers, like they thrive off that adrenaline from the crowd and from getting those reactions. So at first we didn't have an audience, but we're working out of the uh, Daily's Place Amphitheater in Jacksonville, Florida. It's like our home base. Mm -hmm. So it's cool that it's an outdoor amphitheater. So there's fresh... I've dropped she the water. She has thrown I'm a so water sorry. bottle. I'm so sorry. Crazy. Okay, just, Maddie just came over to see what's like, going on. He's like, bro. He's upset. <laughs> it's okay, Maddie. It's okay, buddy. Water bottle. Sorry. He Maddie's walked the away. dog. He lost it. That tail is so far down. He's, he's so upset. <laughs> so, so Jacksonville. Outdoor, open air amphitheater. So after a while, we started saying, okay, let's let friends and family come. And so friends and family came. And it was like 5,000 seats or more than 5,000 seats. So the audience came in and they were very far away from us. We're tested every time we go to work. So we're very safe. They were safe. You have to wear a mask. They had it organized like in little pods. My company cares. That's that's one thing that's really amazing about this company. They care about us. They care about our fans. They're a very caring company. So they let people safely come and then they started letting a little more and a little more. And then now I think we're allowed like a, not allowed, I think because we're in Florida, we're yeah. allowed to fill the place. But because they're very safe, I think they allow up to like a thousand people. So a thousand people safely distance all throughout. You could, I mean, you see that there's an audience, but it's not like, but it's still awesome having our fans back. The first time our fans came back, I went out there and there's maybe seven, 800 people. But just the idea that we had fans back, like I got teary eyed when Aww. I went, I was like, Welcome back to all elite wrestling. Like I had tears in my eyes because it was like it was such a cool moment to have fans back and knowing that it was safe, it, it made it cool and it makes it cool whenever they're there. Were yeah. some other wrestling and some other things doing like the digital audiences where they had like their faces? Yeah, like they WWE were live. Does that. Or that was because I think the... I was watching it the other day and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like scrolling. I'm like, what is it? what? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are these digital faces? Yeah, I guess you watch from home and your face yeah, shows and I, up. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so weird. Like, it's interesting to see, but I was like, this is so strange. So I'm sure that does not at all have the same effect as well, and I think like real people being there. During like all the baseball stuff, like they had the people's faces cut out in like- Cardboard <laughs> cutouts yeah. in the crowd, yeah. So strange. It's like, oh, you have your box seats? Okay, well, we're still gonna put your face there. So it's Just like to you're give actually- that illusion that there's- yeah, but now I'm even thinking like they had to go on all of these screens to like add someone because yeah. you couldn't have like the same person, like the same face. Like there was like hundreds of different faces. I think there were like a live audience though, like a sort of a Zoom type Yeah, thing. that's so, wow. That's actually very risky too because people could be doing weird stuff on their camera. <laughs> that's true. I don't, I well, don't know. Well, I'm glad that you guys have a real audience back. <laughs> I guess they could- be getting hit with sticks too. They, oh my God, I have to, I'm gonna send you the video. It's gonna take some time. But after this podcast, I need to go back. I saw it was like June, 2017. 
So I need to find the content. I feel bad. I'm pretty positive she sent me that. I definitely sent you something. She's like, have you ever heard uh, of Ray Mysterio? Yeah. Because I think my sister's with him right now. And Yeah. We had a great... I, th- I mean, he would not remember me at all. Because like, You never know. Is there any chance though, that it was just some dude with a Ray mask? No, it was no, him. Because I was like okay. talking... Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, he's like a Because you could celeb. buy Ray Mysterio masks. No, no, no. It was like a very small, like, invited group of people. Like, okay. He was, like, was the, invited. He was like the celeb of the group. I'm like, oh my God. That makes sense. Yeah. So he, yeah, he was invited. It wasn't like random. But I mean, it was completely random, but he was, he was the celebrity of the group. <laughs> I, I can't wait to watch this video now. I don't it's think it's be... in the video. Oh, I, Cause I was like, kind of like nervous. I was like, I don't really know anyone here. You know, right? I'm just like talking to myself, which I mean, I do anyway, but I need to find the content. And there's definitely a video of me getting beat by sticks. I just, um, okay, I definitely so. want to see that. I'm curious to see like what they were doing to you and why you were taking that abuse. It seems very strange. They if you're in a to wrestling get... match, totally get it, but just, yeah. Hanging out in Mexico? I don't know if they were saying like the spirits of this like island could have like, you know, like gotten you or something. So like you didn't want to like take it back off the island. Did I just miss the sound effect? You did. Yeah, it was it's a okay. wah, wah, I'm not wah, wearing the headphones, wah. so I'm missing out on sound effects. It's fine. You you can see them later. Okay. Like um, I don't know if they were like it was like an intense like saging, but like we just need to really make sure. Bam. You guys, you we should have put in the stick. Is just when they take the, the, the light, the sage. Yeah, so, and then they, so picture that, but then picture maybe big sticks. And and you <laughs> I have no idea. I, like I said, I don't know. Like I am being very politically incorrect of whatever was happening, but but I need to bring something up for all of us to discuss. Uh-oh. I know where you're going. The Pazuki. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so oh, this- Oh my okay, God. So I didn't pizookie. actually realize it because you- always are posting this freaking cookie with ice cream. And I had no idea, like it did not even click until Jenna, our friend, Sean told us that, cause he's also from here, lived here. Sean, I don't know your history, but you know, whatever. I'm so <laughs> mad. Sean for six, he's so like one of my best friends. Spent some time in Arizona. I'm so he mad He was a professional him. baseball player. He was. Spent some time in Arizona. He's yeah. like, okay, you're there, get the bazooki. I'm like, okay. Got the bazooki. Yeah, we did the chocolate. All chocolate chip. Yeah. Okay. So he was telling me that there's, you can do, Half and half. I did see that on the menu, but honestly, like I think I saw one half. It was like some type of cookie I didn't like. I was like, well, I like chocolate chip. I'm White like, macadamia, yeah, peanut butter, chocolate chip. I never and saw. You can have half and half of any combo. I never saw peanut butter. Oregano's. So and, shout the them cookie. out. Let them know now. Yeah. So it's called Oregano's. Is that the restaurant? Mm-hmm. Are there a bunch of them? Is Oregano's. it a chain? Yeah, Is it all local? Arizona. So it's just like an Arizona thing. They seem like they're scattered around Maybe the state. They're branching out, but there's a lot in Arizona. Even like in Flagstaff, <laughs> there's, there's a lot. <laughs> Beef salad. She got the beef salad twice. <laughs> Wait, it's what it's called like the, <laughs> It's like beef uh, You can't go wrong with anything there. Their salads are huge. What is really massive. Good. But what is it called? It's like the beef something. I don't know. It's so Gosh, funny. I was like, <laughs> And then okay, so today we went on a hike and so she had the, we ordered from there two nights ago and she got the beef whatever the salad. It's like beef beef beef, whatever. I gotta look and it up. And so we're hiking down this mountain. It's all rocks, like literally rocks, like we're going it's a, it's a scramble. We're going downhill. And I hear, I'm like about to take this big step. And I hear like a whisper come from Justine behind me. And it was like, oh, salad. And I was like, what? Cause before this, she was complaining. Like, I thought she might've fallen. So as I turned to go, what? My foot slips. I, I fell. I'm like, what did you, did you just say beef salad? I was like, did I literally almost fall I'm off crying, this cliff crying. because you said beef salad? <laughs> She's like, I said beef salad. She's like, and I'm like on the ground. I'm like, oh my God. You were hiking Wait. thinking about the beef salad? <laughs> yeah, whispering beef salad. And I was like, what's she saying? Cause like we also had masks on. So I was like concerned. So it was like a muffled beef salad because of the mask? <laughs> yeah. And as I turn, my foot slips and I wipe out. I'm almost cracking my head. Are you okay? Head. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> she not t- talking to you. Wait, you were saying before your back hurt. Is that why? No, it's been hurting. Oh my God. Okay. This I just, don't know why. Maybe it so jolted it back in. Yeah. So anyway, I fell off the cliff because she was behind me saying beef <laughs> salad. And I thought- So maybe, you had the beef salad and it was really good. And then you were thinking about it while you're hiking and then you got it again? Yes, yeah, she got it again. It's so <laughs> funny to me. I'm just, I'm replaying what happened. Because you saw me fall. Can you hold my mic? This is go. such an emotional I podcast. My, I'm, no, I'm laughing so No, hard. she. You can use this in a highlight video. Oh my God, beef salad. With like dramatic music. I turned around. I go, did you say beef salad? She's like, yes. I go, if I would have like broken my leg because I turned around to look at you and you freaking said beef salad. I was like, I would, I would probably hit you. 
<laughs> but yeah, so we, this was after like two hours and she was obviously very hungry just thinking about beef salad. She's not okay. She's not okay. <laughs> well, that's it for this edition. Well, just seems no longer with us. Thanks um, for joining us. This is why sometimes we have a way different brain. Okay, but like, oh listen, my god, you even have the oregano's website pulled <laughs> Shut up. up! I gotta. Okay, I know this. Did is... you just order that from like no DoorDash? Listen, I need you guys to just know their website directly. What the what what the salad said, is called? This is like me trying to find. Oh, I found the word by the way about the snowy thing, uh, like grapple. Also called soft hail or snow pellets. It's a precipitation that forms when super cold water droplets are collected and freeze on falling snowflakes. Wow. Yes. Fascinating. (gasps) We've learned a lot in this podcast. I, okay, you guys. Okay. It's, it's. (laughs) I don't think I can even say it. The big beef stro salad. (laughs) Okay. Why is this so funny? I don't know. I anyway, I it's got, really not. Okay, but the pizuki. There's also a big rig <sighs> pasta, right? Yes. That's what you got last night, the night before. I did. It? It I've never had that, but I like spicy. the name big rig. It's spicy. It was good. And then I got, oh God, I got the deep dish. Well, you ordered I was like, you just get the pizza. It looks good. It. I picked up the box. I was like, this is like 10 pounds. And so like before <laughs> you came over for this podcast, I was starving and I ate like two pieces. And I feel, that's why I said I felt like a potato with a, a spud with a wig. I'm feeling heavy. My belly. Okay, but. The you save any pizuki? We didn't get, we couldn't we get any Okay, today. so have we explained what no, it is? Okay. I don't think we have. So we, ours came in a, uh, like, a, like a tin. Right. So, but you said that it normally. Carry out, it's a tin, but when you're at the restaurant, it's a hot skillet with the chocolate chip cookie baked in there. Oh, yeah. With the cold, obviously, ice cream on top with the chocolate chips. We've had that before at other restaurants. We, at sure, BJ's. Sure, like BJ's. But like, yes. but. BJ's, you get the little sampler where you get like three little yeah. ones and got great flavors. And I think they actually bought the rights to the name Pizuki. Oh. And I think Oregano's used to be Pizuki and then BJ's kind of took that over. Mm. Oh. But I think Oregano's kind of has the best it's Pizuki incredible. out there. It's so good. It's like, because it's a little undercooked. So it's right. like soft. It was and so good. they put the ice cream in a separate cup and they kept it away from the hot stuff because yeah. they were very, very, like, we don't want it this to melt. melt. I was like, oh my gosh, you were so thoughtful. I would have, so yeah. It, oh my gosh. We were like, and oh, we'll just cut it. you can't when you're done eating, no. but it's worth it. I was so, I, I actually couldn't move for three hours. Yeah, it was a very sad sight. It was worth it though. It was really good. Worth, you guys like, did the it best, right. The best. I was very happy that you went. Now the peanut butter mm-hmm. half that you got, is that just peanut butter chips then? It's peanut butter. But peanut like, butter cookie. Cookie peanut is butter peanut butter. Oh my God, Jenna. Do you think Like tomorrow's our last night. Do we get one? Maybe. I'm going to get one. I'm going to do it. Maybe we I get can, it. I can, can I throw out an idea? Yeah. The sun will come out <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> really? It's supposed to come Is out. It's supposed to. They have a nice patio. I'm checking the weather. It's heated. Go there, eat safely distance on the patio. I saw the patio when I picked up the There's actually a table around a corner. Like, if you go on the patio and then go to the right, there's one table that exists that's not around anybody. There's I no other that. tables. You guys could sit there. Get the cookie straight out of the Do oven. Do they forget about you back there, though? No, like, never. They don't see you? Never. They're great. Great they service, are, they, they were so nice. Justine's like, yeah, they were, like, I went in there to pick it up, and they was like trying to have a conversation with me, and I forgot how to talk to people because we're from California, and everything's been closed. Yeah. <laughs> they were very nice. Oregano's is awesome. So if you get it hot from the skillet, eat on the patio. It's your last day. That's true. It is. We can safely. Actually, they just did open up, I think, Los Angeles outside dining again. Yeah. I'm not sure if it went through but it's kind of crazy you feel safe doing it yeah i mean for this cookie i would risk COVID. to be well, honest with you honestly it was so good, good. it was so good i would prefer to bring it back here and eat in my big jammies do you think that what if we bring our own skillet they, they would put it in no. our skillet and then we can you don't have a skillet well how much would i have to pay to buy the skillet you could probably no you, what, what if we bring the skillet back to this no. is a lot this isn't. This isn't. This isn't this how it works. Okay, so we got to change Whatever the subject you do, again. Just definitely get it in the skillet. Okay, even if you just yeah. take it from them in the skillet and take it to go. Yeah. Shut up. I'll be like, so I'll, nice. I'll, I'll pay extra for the skillet. Okay, we need to discuss something. So obviously, I'm a huge Apple fan, and you just today got something in the mail. I did. What did you get today? I got a new MacBook Air. <gasps> oh, and this M1? is one. Yes. M1. Oh my gosh. Very and this exciting. is a big upgrade for you because you had a MacBook Air previously, though. But it's it was you said 2012. I think around 2012, 2013 is when I was writing my book. Mm-hmm. I just wanted like a lighter laptop that had better battery life, take on tour, and just be able to whatever type of way. And then I just never thought about getting a new one until now when I realized that 
all of my updates were outdated and I said, okay, I don't have any complaints with what I have, but maybe it's time to update and, and upgrade. And you did, so and you got it today. That's very exciting. Did you do like an unboxing or did you just open it like a normal box? I took a picture like, and sent it to Jesse. Okay, I go. go, should I save this and bring it for when we <laughs> podcast? Live unboxing? I, just, I took it out, plugged it in and did like the first two things for a setup and then I've been out all day, so I still haven't been able to like take it all in yet. I'm excited for you to experience it though. Cause it's like Thank going you. from like such an older machine, even though like that's not that old and it's probably working perfectly fine. Like you're really going to see the upgrades. The display too. I feel like the display is where you're going to see it the most. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful clear. Screen, we just computer. recently like upgraded our grandma from like a 2009 iMac to like the newest one. And like looking at that, I was like, oh my gosh, like I feel like I need glasses. Like we're looking at this like old screen. So it's, man, I'm excited for you. The M, like the new she M1, like she does. Yeah, she, she loves she's, it. She's excited. But she still wanted to play her solitaire game from like 2000, like 1999. This solitaire game was so old. Grandma, hi, if you're watching, which she probably is. But uh, she's been playing this game for so long that I looked at her stats. It's impressive. I think I should, I took a picture of it, but her stats of playing solitaire were so impressive. Like her win ratio. Yeah, incredible. It was like 95% win ratio in solitaire. And can you still play solitaire on the newer computers? You can, but but, but obviously like if you're playing this game for so long, you're going to want that same game. Sure, you want your same game. I get, I get it. I don't like change either. They still make it. They, well, I tried to buy it. and It was like this is this game is so old you can't even pay for it. So it's just like a free trial from like 1999, but it's still working. Uh, so yeah, I'm so excited for your MacBook. But you do like a little bit of editing, yeah, like video I'll do and stuff like that. Movie stuff here and there. Uh, GarageBand. I'll do voiceovers. I do voiceover work. So that makes it really easy to do voiceovers. And the microphone in the new MacBooks is also really good. So you, yes, you can, really? yeah, a lot of people just like I don't record. need to use one of these? No, I mean, it, it definitely helps, but like you can still get away with doing tons of VO stuff and it's almost completely silent. Actually, it's, it it's, is it silent. Is, uh, There's yeah, no fans. It's silent. So if you're doing any VO, like there won't be any fan noise. So it's, wow. it's incredible. Was your Very old great. MacBook a little, did you ever hear fan noise? Once in a while. Yeah. You Got pretty hot probably too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This and the battery life is going to be so much better. It's going to be, oh, you're yeah, oh, battery, I'm excited. Yeah, only last, last so long. So, yeah. wow, I'm excited to use this. Wow. Yeah, you, um, I, I kind of went in blind. I really didn't know what, I just, okay, I, I need to get a new one, but I didn't know what was out there. And then my friend Alex said, oh, you got to get the M1. So It's true. Definitely. Good good guy, yeah, Alex. Alex, good Alex, job. Alex, yeah, way, to go, way to go, thank Alex. You. Alex, thank you. Good job. And, oh. Gosh. You also got a new Apple Watch? I did. I did. The uh, the first series, I wore it as long as I could, and then it, it that was it. It just went out on me. That's probably why you haven't ever accepted my fitness request from, let's see I'm here. actually surprised that it lasted could that long. Could you get long. a fitness request on that one? Yeah. I That's impressive so. because I gave, I think, my dad my Apple Watch from like two years ago, and he's like, this battery <laughs> doesn't work anymore. I'm like, ooh. Really? I want to get a new battery and see if that'll help and then give it to my niece. Yeah. I feel like if you change the battery, I feel like that's what kind of goes. I'm hoping first. Yeah. But the Apple stores here are closed. Yeah. Do you want to guess how many days I, ago that I sent you a friend request? I'm going to guess 993. Just take a guess. Can I take the under 992? Oh, come on. Is this price is right? I, well, I don't Can know. I bid $1? No, you have the answer. I do have the answer. Um, it was 862 days <laughs> that's ago. That's not fair. It's you not won. Fair. It's not fair. It's not, but that's I still- That's a, okay. That still is a lot of days. It's a lot of days. So is it still sitting here? Like, will I be able to find it? I don't know. Because I think You'll this You'll have is... to teach me, if you don't mind, how to find that. Yeah. And also, I need to learn how to, like, set up the sleep without it asking me how long I want to sleep for to set an alarm to wake me. Because yeah. I don't want to commit to that. I don't- I want to be able to see, I want to track my sleeping and see how it is, but I don't want to commit to like waking me up after eight. Yeah. Like if I want to sleep in, I don't want my watch to start vibrating or whatever it does. Like I don't want it to wake me. I want to sleep. Their bedtime yeah. has been a very infuriating feature. I think. Is there like, a way me, to turn that me. off? I turned it off because I had it set. I was like, oh, I'm going to wake up at this time. So you then, can turn it off and yes. it still tracks your sleep? Can't you? Yeah, you I think so. Yeah, but it's it's still weird because it'll still ask you like, when do you want to go to sleep and when do you? I'm like, but I don't know when I I'm going to go to sleep. I'm like, be smart enough to figure out when I'm sleeping because when you swipe right? down, there's a little bed that you can like yeah. click, and I think that would just turn it into bedtime mode. And then when it we're done it. with this, I might ask you guys for some help on that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I had to turn off bedtime because it'd be like Sunday morning at like six a.m. and it's like, I'm like, oh, shh, stop it, and then I take it off, throw it under it's the. It's the same idea as when it tries to tell you to breathe. Yeah. I mean, I'm not knocking Apple. I enjoy, no, I, love, I love my Apple products, but I feel like I just kind of breathe on my own. 
You know, there are times when it tells me to breathe when I'm like freaking Same. out. Same. I'm it, like, it knows. Anxious and I'm like, and my anxiety. Well, then I get even more upset because then my, I know my watch is telling me that what I should be doing. Mm-hmm. And then I, it's just like, you know, kind of a cycle. But yeah, it, it the does bedtime know. feature, to be fair, I also never really looked into it. I like set a bedtime once. And then like the one Sunday morning, I woke up like, you know, a little grumpy because it was like waking me up. And then I'm like, I'm turning this off. But I'm pretty sure like you can probably adjust it or you can set it for certain days, like Monday through Friday, I think. I have mine set for 6 a.m. every day. So I know that like I actually like when it tells me like, okay, I need to start winding down and or I should probably get off my computer. So you're up at 6 a.m. every day? Most days. There are some days where I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, and I just like shut it off. But it's set for 6 a.m. every day. That's brave. Thankfully, my body just wakes me up at 6 a.m. It's like, all right, here you go. You also wake up at 6? I mean, not by choice. It's just like, hey, I'm like, but I don't want to be. And then I'm tired by 9 a.m. And then you get up and exercise at 6. Sometimes. I do uh, like lightsaber training, you know, a couple of (laughs) times. I do actually prefer like I've I seen like your to Instagram wake up stories like like wake up work out because if it doesn't happen before ten yeah. a.m. it's probably not going to happen. So but I then you're like, tired at nine. Yeah, I get really tired. So do you nap? <laughs> oh yeah. Does your watch allow you to nap? Are like, you well, if you to? take it off, you can do whatever you want. Oh, so that's the key. Yeah, you just take it off. It's like stand up. You're like no. You like fall asleep. Like I didn't tell you you could nap. <laughs> yeah. Wake up. I'm like oh, I think you need to be put on the charger for a little bit. Throw it on the charger. Speaking of which, that's why I held off on getting a watch for so long. I thought, wait a minute, it's been all these years and the battery still can't last 24 hours? This one lasts pretty long, but mm-hmm. it's, it makes it throughout the day. It charges you can't quickly. wear, like, if I want to sleep in it, well, then I have to set a time where I know I could charge it a little bit before I leave the house. And that's, that's a big commitment. So that's when, like, I'll usually... forget to put it on. Yeah, I'll charge it, like, if I'm going to take a shower before bed, I'm like, okay, I'll charge it, you know, that 10, 20 minutes, whatever. Or if, I'm, or if I hit my goal for the day and it's, like, 7 o'clock, I'm like okay, I'll take a little break and throw this on the charger. Like, I already hit my goal. I'm fine. I don't need to, you know. It get can't those. tell you what to do when you put it on the charger. Can it? It cannot. Except Does I, it think, it'll, I think if there's an alarm, it will still go off. I think it will too, yeah. Or if I get a phone call, it'll like vibrate. It'll, I'm like, I think it'll go off on your phone then instead of the watch. <laughs> it's hard to tell. It is. Sometimes it just doesn't. Hey, it it's me, your watch. The you ba- left me on the charger. <laughs> so I'm using my phone to talk to you. <laughs> it's like, hey, what are you laying down? Like, yes. Wait, do you know about the feature where you can find your phone? The, the yes. B thing. Okay. Because that's like the most important feature. For sure. Okay. Just making sure. Because it's For like, sure. Thank that's you. how I find my phone. And then it ends up being in my pocket. I hear you dinging it all the time. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I'm like, it's right here. Ding, 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 ding. Oh we my were gosh. at AW a few weeks ago. Like, we were in a trailer. And I couldn't find my phone. We we're going to go do rehearsals and I couldn't find my phone. And I'm like, am I losing my mind? He's losing his mind. <laughs> um, John Lovett, shout out. Um, couldn't find it anywhere. It's like, I'm not going crazy. I I had it here. I have no idea where it went. So then I used my watch and did the dee, dee, dee. And so there were three of us, like Jim Ross <laughs> and then uh, one of the other guys was in our trailer and the three of us are like looking all over the trailer. We could hear it. <laughs> But we couldn't tell where it was coming from. And so we found out that it actually like slid behind. There's like a, a recliner in the trailer. And it somehow got in the crack of the recliner and went to like the bottom of it. I was going to say couch cushion. That's yeah. always when it's in a couch cushion. It's always. So luckily yeah. that feature was on. Yeah. So I have one question. Sure. Okay. What would you say your biggest fanboy moment is in your like history of wrestling? It's my entire career. Oh, um, okay. I, I mean was obsessed with wrestling and that's like I lived wrestling uh just any time I was sitting at my tv watching wrestling and renting tapes at blockbuster so the idea that I was working with all these legends that I grew up watching like the Shawn Michaels and the Bret Hart's and the Hulk Hogan Stone Cold Steve Austin got to work with The Rock like all these guys every time I went to work I was just like in awe because I'm working and I'd play it cool sometimes like <laughs> I'm standing in the ring with Bret the Hitman Hart at Wrestlemania <laughs> No big deal. But then, like, I'd have friends in the crowd who knew what was going on, and I'd look at them and be like. (laughs) (laughs) So my entire career has been fanboying. And then now I'm almost at a point where, like, I'm cool, kind of jaded, kind of been around for a while, done a lot. But at the same time, when I see a Dustin Rhodes and a Jake the Snake Roberts and whoever else might have a, a theme song from the WCW Slam Jam CD, I might go up to them and sing them their entrance music every time I see <laughs> it. That's so funny. It, it just, it never ends. 
Did That's you ever good. think that you'd still be doing this like after kind of the WWE days? No. Did you just kind of like check out? Passion was kind of sucked out of me and it was like, okay, well, I still like wrestling, but it's, yeah. I had a good run. I had a great run. So I thought I was done and wrote a book. This is my life as a ring announcer. This was my career. Got to do all the stuff. It was great. But then I thought I was done. Then there was an event called All In. And All In was like this super show put on by wrestlers. And they were challenged to sell out a show on their own. So they sold out this arena of 11,000 people in Chicago. Wow, that's a lot of people. With no company. It wasn't a company doing this. This was the group of wrestlers. This was Cody Rhodes. This was Kenny Omega. This was the Young Bucks. This was these guys, Hangman Adam Page. These guys putting on their very own show in Chicago. And I was on the tour with Tool watching this press conference. I was at the gym. I remember sitting at the Lifetime in Minneapolis. I go, this is so cool. These guys are doing it. They're, they're putting on this show on their own. Totally rooting for them. But I had been out of the business for a few years at this point, I think like four years, and um, just like, ah, oh, that would be awesome to be a part of this, but I'm not part of their crew. I'm, you know, I'd love to do this, but I'm not one of them. Like, I'm, I'm not part of their crew. And shortly after, they reached out and said, hey, would you want to announce on the show? I was like, what? That's cool. So I never really got to say goodbye to wrestling. I never got that chance to go out there and say, this is... My last time to go out there and be a wrestling ring announcer. I had gone out and done some TV shows, some movies, commercials, tried other things, the tool stuff, but I had never gotten to say goodbye to wrestling. So they did the show in Chicago, which is my hometown. Grew up going to all the shows there. Got to go there for this one last night because I knew it was just a one-shot deal. Go out there, announce one last time for a wrestling show in front of a wrestling audience in my hometown. And I went in and I was nervous because I hadn't been around wrestling for all these years and I was basically out and I was working with another ring announcer, Bobby Cruz, and I said, man, they might boo me out of the building. You know, I'm seen as like an ex-WWE guy and I'm not, you know, part of this group. And he goes, you're going to be fine, you're going to be fine. And I went in there and the place was chanting my name. Oh, that's so cool. That's cool. And it just, it, because I had been like dreaming of this moment, like what's this going to be like when I'm standing in the middle of the ring again, like first day going back to school and it was just amazing you know it was like cool they remember me and went out there and got to do that show and thought okay it sucks that it was just one night because it was such an amazing feeling such an amazing show but it just it made you want more and it was like all right it's one shot deal tomorrow all these other guys go back to the companies they work for and i go back to not being a wrestling announcer anymore and that night they're like stay tuned, stay tuned. And I didn't know what was going mm -hmm. on. And then shortly after, that's when I found out about AEW. And then I had to keep that a secret for a long time and couldn't tell anybody, but was so excited. And then back in wrestling, um, and I love it. That's it's so exciting though. Nothing like it. Because I feel like that happens a lot in YouTube where it's just like, it just becomes that constant mm -hmm. grind and then you just, like the passion just disappears. And then finally it's like, okay, why did I start doing that? You know, mm -hmm. why did I enjoy doing that? And then- so it's great that they were able to to kind of revive that for probably so many people. So many people. Everybody, that's all we talk about when we're at work. We're like, this is stupid. How great this is. How perfect this is. How much we love this. And how awesome our company is to us. And even being associated with the Jaguars, because it's like our sister company. And I kind of went in thinking, they're the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're probably looking at all of us, you know, we're wrestling people, you know could have been any farther from how it's been. The Jacksonville Jaguars have been so amazing, the entire organization. So they really welcomed us with open arms and it's been one big happy family. It's been awesome. It's so cool. Now we got to talk a little more about Tool before, oh gosh. before we yeah, let please. you go, because obviously like I freaking love Tool. Like I love them so much. Like Jenna can, she knows. Yeah, okay, so we're sisters. Obviously we grew up like your room was across from my room and I'm a little bit, I was, well, yeah, five, six years younger and I had to listen to basically toll. So even though I didn't <laughs> listen to it, I indirectly listened to it for years growing up. What's my favorite song? Um, I, what about the pieces fitting? Uh, th yeah. I, I know, know the pieces fit. Okay. That, that one, that one, that's my jam. Um, anyway, I think the first time you're like, there's a tool concert in San, or San Francisco. We're going to go. I'm like, we are, I don't even know if I lived here yet. You didn't I No, think, I literally think I flew out from like college from West Virginia, flew to LA. And then we flew to San Francisco yep. To Jenna, go to, uh, 
you were like, you have to go with me. I'm like, I'm all right. So I went. It was such a random time. And then, and then I think I've been there to was, full four. Did you enjoy it? I think so. Wait, didn't we go to two? Oh. We went to two back to back, I think, we, in San Francisco. We did. We, I think we went to two. And then we also went to two la- last year? No, year uh, before? Uh, I, did we go to three? It was like the end LA of- LA ones? No, we went to two LA ones. And the then one? There was one at the outdoor amphitheater. That's where we met. Yes, yes. I went to that one. And then we went to two at the Staples Center. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever, like, was that? And then they were supposed to go back on tour again. This last year. They were on tour when COVID hit. It was really so sad. But like, what was that like, like touring with them? Obviously, I don't know. Like the VIP thing was like the coolest VIP experience that like, I feel like I've ever really kind of been to because like the way that Adam like talked to the fans and sort of like brought everybody in to kind of like tell them like about Tool. And it was just really such a cool experience. That was the idea of it because there's a lot of bands who have a VIP deal and kind of come in, you get a program, pay a lot of money and then you're out. Yeah. So Adam feels the same way like I feel for the fans. You want the fans to have an awesome experience. So let's do everything so they have an awesome experience. So Adam comes out and as Tool fans, it's like this mysterious band that you hear all these rumors. I heard Maynard this and I heard Maynard that. (laughs) Like all these crazy stories, which I learned about from being on the road because all these fans are talking about. I'm like, these are the guys I hang out with in the back. and They're... (laughs) totally normal like really great guys and then those, we're not supposed to stories. know that we're right not, we're supposed to, it's supposed to be mysterious Maynard's gonna be in the back in the shadows yeah <laughs> there's all these weird stories but then Adam comes and talks and tells you these stories of how they met and how their music's made and it's kind of like he gives you a peek behind the curtain so it was really neat experience for the fans um and then as I was talking about like with wrestling fans I had that good rapport with them and the tool fans kind of accepted me. And before I knew it, like I was getting all these tool fans following me on social media because we had a good relationship from them coming to all these, like they came to more than one event. So they would come to a bunch of different events and I was doing my book signing while I was on tour with them. I had fans in Michigan, tool fans offer to take me to my book signing. They're like, we want to go to the bookstore and get your, uh, your book and hear what you say. And you know, okay. Tool fans drove me to my book signing, sat in while I spoke to the people who came to my signing, got to hear my story, they got my book, and then we went back to the show, and then they watched the concert that night. So the fans were amazing, but the guys in the band, they're geniuses. They're, I know music's in 4-4, right? That's standard. Mm-hmm. Their music, what, 7-3, and they switch it up, and they they don't do music by the rules. They just create their own art, and their songs are so creative, and they're awesome, and I got to hear that every single night. And Adam's background, too. I mean, just the fact that, like, you know, he came from sort of the Hollywood world of, like, you know. Sculpting. Yeah. And, like, he's an artist like, in that working, regard, too. I think he was working on, like, Jurassic Park or something and then, like, left that to go. Like, Nightmare on Elm Street, I think. Yeah, which like, is. Crazy. So crazy. And it's, Tool has such, they've influenced me so much, like, in my entire career. Like, first of all, like, the, uh, I wanted to get into stop motion, like, videography, photography and stuff because of their music videos. And then which just. their videos are insane. Very, yeah, they're they're crazy. But then even um, just like just everything, like I mean, I played guitar. You you remember my guitar oh, days? God, like guitar. Can you played tool on your guitar? Oh uh, yeah, I wasn't good at it, but I knew like all of the intros. Someone. Wow, <laughs> true. That's very true. I had, like the guitar. I want to like, hear tool. this. Oh, I can't do it anymore. This was oh, like in okay. high school. Oh no, don't encourage it. <laughs> Please, yeah, not another oh. hobby. No, no, I, no well, time. I think what's interesting too about tool is the fact that like they have been able to keep this, like their audience captivated for so long. I mean, they've been around for so long and they're still able to sell out shows. Like they hadn't put out an album yeah. in over 10 years and Don't every time they me. announced shows, yeah, this the tours would sell out. And they weren't available on any streaming platforms for the longest time exactly. too, which believe me, I heard all about. I heard all about this. So I was like, what do you mean they're not on streaming? Like I can't just pull them up on Spotify. No. And you're like, no. I'm like, well then how do you listen to them? And you're like, exactly. And I'm like, what? You didn't answer my you question. You have to be a Tool fan in yeah. order to listen to Tool. I was like, I don't even know how to listen to Tool. So I had a friend load my computer up with Tool songs, right? And that's what I listened to when I started working with them. Like, oh, this is really good. I like this. So one day... um, I'm sitting on the bus with Adam and everybody went to bed and we're up and the song comes on and it's a cool song and he goes, oh, the driver's a Tool fan. And I go, oh, this is you guys? And he just looked at me. It was Vicarious and Vicarious was not one of the songs that was loaded onto my computer. Oh my. And I go, it's not like your music's easy to find. I only had limited (laughs) amounts. So 
all the Tool fans, like, I'm a new Tool fan. All the, the hardcore Tool fans are waiting for a new album. For me, I had uh, Jason, who was one of our security guys, gave me the rest of the albums that I was missing on my computer. So to me, I got a new album because it was new Tool music since yeah. I it wasn't the songs that I kept listening to. It's so that's hilarious. Crazy. He completed my collection until those, the new one came out. Where did those files come from? Were they like illegally downloaded? Like A friend of mine must have had them on CD, oh, okay. put them onto his computer, and then just gave them to my computer. Because okay, I forgot you can even, I don't even remember Jason how had the CDs, so CDs just, even work. Well, yeah, yeah, right? I don't remember. Because like, I wasn't sure if you could actually do that because then couldn't you like rip a CD? I think you could put them on from iTunes. I think you're able to share music that way with like Maybe. people you know. Back in the day where you drag. But they have yeah. like, uh, I, mean, I, don't I would just listen to it on YouTube. So through like YouTube playlists, like oh. illegally. But I mean, I bought, trust me, I have yeah. all of the <laughs> albums. Don't worry. I've bought them many times. You have. So it's, it's worth it. But what did you just, think of the new album? Was I, I loved it. Oh, I thought it was great. Yeah. No, I'm I, obviously I'm a huge fan, but it was, um, it's just like, oh, I mean, we waited so long for that. I say we, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was a part of this. I feel like I waited, <laughs> but it was so great when they did finally come to streaming and it was around the same time that Taylor Swift also, I guess, I think she had her album out. So it was like the, the battle between tool fans and Taylor Swift fans. And I'm also a Taylor Swift fan, but I'm more of a tool fan. So you know, it was kind of, it was hard to see the two worlds and collide. And they hit number one for like all their older stuff yes. and the new stuff, right? It's crazy. I mean, it really, when I'm thinking about it, like Tool has influenced me so much, like even Maynard from whenever I first heard him talk about jujitsu, like it, that was in the back of my mind from a very young age. And then finally I was like, I think this is what I want to do now. And I'm like, now it's like, I, I, now I'm just thinking like how much Tool has influenced me. It's a little crazy. So yeah. So, and the thing about like Danny, the drummer, I was Tell people, like, when you guys came to VIP and you got to come to Soundcheck, it's like, hey, look, Danny only has two arms. But when you hear their music, you figure he's like an octopus because there's no way somebody with two arms could play that. I know? just found my drumsticks from him the other day. You did. <laughs> and I like, I was like, what are these? And you're like, don't touch those. <laughs> I was like, well, okay. Those are Danny's drumsticks. I was like, like, did they give them to you? And you're like, no, I bought them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. He was giving, uh, I think, like private, like drumming lessons in LA, and I was like, "Do I sign up for this?" I'm it was a, it was many years ago. This oh, was probably okay. like two thousand. I don't know. Like it was a long time ago. Did you sign up? I didn't, but I did want to start playing drums again, though. So I don't live with you. You can do whatever she you want. She doesn't support it, but it's I okay. Don't, uh, no, well. Well, I don't live with you, so you can do whatever you want. I don't have time for if that. If I lived with you and I had to hear that again, I would be like, oh no, <laughs> no time for drums. You don't have So time. you did drums and guitar? No, I just did guitar. I just wanted to learn drums okay. and I saw that he was doing private lessons. So I was like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, not a fan or anything. Just I'm just here. His kit is insane. It, it is you pretty wild. Well, yeah. Close. Do you have any like secret hobbies or like anything? You know, I'm such other than a wrestling nerd that like I've always just lived for wrestling. I would like to go to the gym too. That's something that I try to go every day. If I don't go, I feel lazy. I love going to the gym. That's kind of where I do all my thinking. Mm -hmm. That's where I'll sit and just get random ideas. That's where I started the ideas for writing my book. Um, so I just, I'm kind of boring. I like wrestling. I like going to the gym. And is it true that you said that you didn't snack until the pandemic? I was very very like I would eat clean and I never kept <laughs> snack food in the house. And What's no your snacks. secret? Once, once a week I could do a cheat meal like an oregano nose pizzuki uh, and pizza, but a uh, Chicago pizza, Luminati's Giordano's, but um, I didn't snack. And then with the pandemic, I'm like, I have no idea how long I'm going to be in my house and <laughs> just doing these little workout routines in my room with like these two little weights and I don't care anymore. Just let myself go. And uh, I tried growing facial hair like I'm doing now. I can't grow facial hair, but I just didn't shave. Um, but yeah, I just would snack and snack and discovered uh, red vines and cookies. And red vines is not like, that's not like a, a, like a, a snack that I'd be like, man, that's what I want to snack on. You know? What's your go-to? Just like cookies. Anything cookies. really. Pretzels. Pretzels Candy, are nice. Chocolate. Pretzels. A little salty though. Yeah. There's um, something called dough bar donuts, which was like my gateway into snacking because it's like a healthy protein donut. But then when I'm like, I have no idea when I'm leaving my house again, I just, I didn't need protein. I just red vines and cookies and um, pita chips with hummus. That's nice. That's and a nice snack. That's like the I'm Halo Top ice cream. That's like, oh, it's protein ice cream. So yeah, sure. I'm allergic to dogs. This is the only dog that I've He's, not been allergic to. Maddie, come he here. He wants you to scoot over so that he oh. can jump up there. Watch. Tell him, go ahead and say, up, up. 
pop, pop. Go ahead, Maddie. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> I was like, he oh. wants to sit on your lap. <laughs> Thank you. Any, like any other dog I'm allergic to, I'd be like sneezing and I'd be like, I can't <laughs> breathe. But for he, some reason, yeah. I'm not allergic to Maddie. He was circling you like you were his prey. I was like, he wants oh. to sit on your lap. Oh my gosh, look how cute. Oh, hello. Maddie. <laughs> how you doing, buddy? Uh, Maddie. Okay, well, we've been- Thank you for- not having me be allergic to you. I oh appreciate it. This is the best. <laughs> Maddie has- Hilarious. Hey, Maddie. Maddie. Are you a good boy? Oh is that your God. new friend? <laughs> it's actually really cute. It's very cute. So I guess our nice one to last topic, um, I was trying to give Jenna like a rundown of like your favorite things and all like, you know, you know, just like some high level things that Golden I've learned girls. about you over the years. Uh, so you also recently have said that you just started eating different types of foods. Like you used to be a very picky eater. Because yeah, Jenna. Oh God, I'm like <laughs> super picky, and I, like, I basically eat like a twelve-year-old. Like I love grilled cheese, pizza, pasta. <laughs> I like cauliflower. Cauliflower has been my like my pandemic like every meal. I'm like, well, not every meal, but every like dinner. I I have like the Brava, which is like yeah. that infrared oven, and I'll make this cauliflower with like this little bit of garlic oil, and it's like roasted. Wow. perfect. It's so good. That's but, impressive. It's like I'm a weird eater, yeah. So like I thought there was hope for her because you said you recently started branching oh, yeah. out okay. into other I things. I used to eat cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner till I was about 13. We'd oh, go out, okay. like I'd go with my family for dinner and order cereal. Hey. <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> Daddy. leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at your hands. Does this mean he likes me? Yeah. I think so, oh, yeah, he does. you're good. If he didn't like you, you would know. He would... Oh my Thank God, he's, he's loving Thank this. Thank you for being my Maddie. Being my <laughs> so yeah, cereal breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then as time went on, I would eat like cheeseburgers and like from McDonald's and Taco Bell. And like, that was it. I didn't, and pizza, lots of pizza. Oh God, I love I pizza. I didn't eat anything fancy. And then I went off to college and still didn't learn how to eat like an adult. We'd go to restaurants and I'd always be petrified to go into a restaurant because <laughs> there would be nothing on the menu for me. I couldn't fear. recognize anything. Yeah. So now, like in this day and age, you're able to like look up a restaurant in advance. Okay, cool. There's one thing I recognize. Yeah. I can order that. Same. So Tool, Adam, really got a kick out of that. And uh, he would make fun of me because I had never tried oatmeal. What? Never I mean, oatmeal, oatmeal is disgusting. It it's disgusting. not great. Look disgusting. Yeah, and then truer. I learned to eat it and I really liked it. And that was Adam's favorite story to tell people. Like, That's hilarious. Get this. That's- Justin was asking me about it. And <laughs> yeah. so they took me to a restaurant in Denver. And it's like the oldest restaurant in Denver. I believe it's called. Uh, <laughs> he keeps licking Hello, you. Thing. For anybody listening to the audio, Maddie, that's our dog. He is now sitting on Justin's lap and he is just having a field day. He's licking your arm. And I've never like, had a dog like hang with me. like So I feel like Dr. Evil, even though that was more of like a cat. <laughs> just the idea of like I have a Mr. Bigglesworth here to speak. Threw me a freaking boon here, right? Mr. Yeah. Bigglesworth. <laughs> Maddie is having a, a great he time. He has claimed you. Thank you so much. I like. I wish I could have a pet. I'm looking into it, getting a sphinx. I believe oh. Mr. Bigglesworth was a sphinx because so, they don't have hair. Our, our, my neighbor, I don't know if you've seen my Instagram stories where there's a cat that kind of oh, just- Oh yeah. Yeah, so Delilah, she was supposed to be a hairless cat. She grew hair. She grew She's hair. She's like, you're not gonna tell me what I'm supposed to be, grew hair. So, a hairless like a, cat grew hair. You so gotta like, be careful. Yeah, because I'm a little bit allergic to her because I'm also severely allergic to cats and I'm like a little bit allergic to her. But there are certain cats that actually do have hair because it's supposed to be like their saliva that you're allergic to. Right. So there's certain ones that like I've pet and like I've been perfectly fine, but then it's so weird. Like I don't know if there's like specific ones that I'm not allergic to. Have you ever been around a sphinx? Yeah, so Delilah. The, Delilah's a sphinx? She's supposed yeah. to be, but she has all that uh, hair. A hairy sphinx? Yeah, she, she grew hair. Grew hair. So she's not supposed to. Like, she's she's got supposed like to. patches where she doesn't have hair. And when I first met her, I was like, oh, I wonder if like maybe she's sick or like what happened here? Because she was like just a little bit different with, you know, with our little naked patches. <laughs> and then they're like, no, she wasn't supposed to have any hair at all. And I'm like, oh, well, then she's thriving. Yeah. Wow. But I'm allergic to her. Her personality is yes. incredible. Like right. this cat will push, well, she will open my door and just start hanging out yeah, in my house. She makes herself at home. Yeah. I've seen the, the yeah. stories. It's great. What about a golden doodle? Very sweet dog. You probably wouldn't I got be- a Lhasa Apso when I was in third grade because I wasn't <gasps> supposed to be allergic to it. Oh. And we begged my parents, begged my parents, finally gave in, got a Lhasa Apso. My mom walks into my room like a week later and it's the middle of winter in Chicago and it's cold outside and she walks in my room and I've got two open windows. <laughs> Maddie. Maddie. Hi. Oh, he's, trying, he's, trying, <laughs> he's trying to get you. Buddy, Hello. come here, sweetheart. Maddie, come here. Come no, sit no, over you're here. You're good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Two, open windows and my fan on high because I couldn't breathe. Oh. And so it was either get rid of the dog or get rid of me. So my sister said, get rid of him. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> my parents said, oh, let's let's keep uh, let's keep Justin and get rid of the dog. So It's really happened. hard being allergic to animals because I've been allergic to cats and like shedding dogs my entire life. But you're okay and with Maddie? I am, yeah, just because he is the, the poodle. He's like awesome. mostly poodle, which is good. Um, but yeah, cats, like growing up, and I love animals so much where I will just suffer through it to the point where I'm like, okay, can't like really breathe. My eyes are swollen shut. And now I have to take like a Claritin or Benadryl and sleep the rest of the day. But yeah, I just, oh, I just love him so much. But living with it and like, you could feel it in your lungs. Yeah. Especially you said you have asthma. You could tell when a dog's around. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's tough. It's definitely not. It. And that's the one thing too, because like we want to eventually rescue another dog. And I'm like, but what if like, I'm going to need like a, yeah. like a trial. We lucked out. Yeah, yeah we did luck out for, for sure. Because sure. I would just suffer the rest of my life probably. I'm not exaggerating. Every dog that I've been around that I'm not supposed to be allergic to, I'm allergic to. My grandma had a poodle, totally allergic. And this is literally the only dog that I've ever hung out with where I wasn't allergic. Maddie, you're magical. This is our second time hanging out. The first time I was just impressed. I'm allergic to every dog and I wasn't allergic. Well, hopefully it stays. Yeah. Hopefully, like, just you wash your hands after just to make sure, yeah. you know, just to be, just, safe. Just to yeah. be safe. Maddie, look but, at you, uh, bud. Well, thank you for being on our podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, this was exciting. Appreciate this was exciting. It. Yeah, and Maddie, I'm clearly, a big fan. You guys, you guys do such a great job with everything you do. Your podcast, your Instagram, just everything you do. Thank you. Oh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, You're I was like, entertaining. Like Jenna, we're gonna have Justin on the podcast. You're like, I was oh, like, okay, okay. I was all like, right. when? You're like, right now. I'm like, oh my god, I just ate so much pizza. I'm like laying in bed <laughs> like this. I'm like, all right, hold on, let me like drag myself up. I we should have had Pazuki's here while we did this. I thought about getting him oh, a cookie, oh. but I was like. You already had one, and then I already had one like this week. So I mean, we're probably yeah. gonna have to get one tomorrow before we go back. We have to probably. bring Sean one. I said to bring it back on our road trip. So he's got okay, an eight eight hour old bazooki. Well, where can everybody find you? And I guess remind them about uh, the show where they can watch it. I highly recommend checking out AEW Dynamite. That's All Elite Wrestling uh, Wednesday nights. 8 Eastern on TNT. It's a fun show. It's entertaining. And then my personal social media is at Justin Roberts. And uh, that's really it. Cool. Well, well thanks for hanging well, out. Yeah. Let's, we're going to give you a round of applause. Round of applause. applause. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Thank you guys thank you. so much for watching. If you watch us on youtube.com slash same brain or listening, uh, you can also leave voice messages. We didn't listen to any uh, okay. This time, but next time we'll be listening and playing them. Anchor.fm slash same brain, as well as same brain on YouTube and basically everywhere. Yeah. I think. And if you're on Apple podcast, make sure you guys leave a review because we do normally read all yes. of those. So we will, we'll read extra ones I, for the next episode. I forgot to post on our Instagram for the last podcast. It's okay. Post it right now. And then we'll post this one, okay. you know, right now when they're watching it. Whoops. Bye. Bye. Bye.